I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a very recent test paper on vectors. It is chapter 9, relationship between points, lines and planes. Once we understand a test paper, it is a good review for us. And that's the whole idea. In most of my videos, you'll find questions from the test papers. Let us look into these multiple choice questions one by one. I will do some of them in details. Now, question number one here is, which of these situations occurs in R3 but not in R2? You are given four choices. Parallel lines, Q lines, coincident lines, intersecting lines. Clearly the answer is Q lines. These are the lines in parallel planes and therefore they don't intersect. Question number two is, what is the relationship between the planes x plus 2y minus 5z equals to 3 and 7x minus 5y plus 2z equals to 1. The options are intersecting along a line, coincident planes, parallel planes, other planes. Now for these planes to be parallel or coincident, uh, the normal should be exactly same or scalar multiple, right? Now the normal here is 1, 2, minus 5. In this case it is 7 minus 5, 2. These normals cannot be written as scalar multiples, so these planes cannot be parallel, they cannot be coincident. We are left with the choice intersecting along a lane, line. So we are left with the choice intersecting along a line. And obviously when we have two planes which are not parallel, they will intersect only along a line. So that is the option. Now question number three here is, determine a value of k for which the line L1 x equals to 2s, y equals to 1 plus ks, z equals to 2 minus s, s belongs to real numbers, and the line L2, x equals to 4 minus t, y equals to 5 plus 2t, z equals to minus 3t, t belongs to real numbers, intersect at exactly one point. Now this question could be solved in a couple of ways, one which has been shown here by the student. This is probably the best way of solving, right? So here what we do is, we can find the value of s and t to find the point. We can literally find the point of intersection, right? So we'll take x equals to 2s and equate it to x equals to 4 minus t. So we get one equation as 4 minus t equals to 2s. Second one, we should take the values comparing z, right? Because we have unknown k for y. So we can equate minus 3t to 2 minus s. Two equations, two variables, find them. Once you find them, substitute for y, right, and then find the value of k. So by solving, we get k equals to 2 as it has been correctly done here. So you get answer as 2. We will look into alternate method uh, in my video, right? So we'll discuss that later. Now let us see question number 4 and 5. Question number 4 here is, what is the nature of intersection between the following planes? So we're given three different planes here. Minus x plus 3y minus 2z equals to minus 1. 3x minus 9y plus 6 equals to 3. Minus 4x plus 12y minus 8z equals to minus 4. Four choices are intersection at a point, two coincident planes with the other intersecting along a line. All planes intersect along a line all coincident planes. So these are the four choices. Now in multiple choice questions you should not really be solving. You have to analyze, right? Now if you see the normals, minus 1, 3, minus 2, if you multiply them by minus 3, you get these normals. 3, minus 9, 6, and if you multiply those by minus 4, you get these normals. Minus 4, 12, and minus 8. That means they are scalar multiples, normals are scalar multiples, means that they are parallel. Now whether they are coincident or not, we can check with these values. Do you see that? So minus 1, if you multiply by minus 3, you get 3. That is same point. Minus 1, when you multiply by minus 4, since that is 4 times, right? 4 times this is minus 4. So since these are also same points, D values, right? They are all coincident planes. So that's a good choice. So that is how you get your answer. Last question here on this page is, determine the distance between two planes. 
pi 1 is 8x minus 2y plus 3z minus 2 equals to 0. Pi 2 is 4x minus y plus 3z plus 4 equals to 0. Now, as you can see, their normals are also related. If I do half of this, half of 8 is 4, half of minus 2 is minus 1, half of 6 is 3, right? So these are actually parallel planes. So what we can do is we can take up a point on one of the plane and find the distance between that point and the plane, right? Now, this Cartesian plane equation is given to us. Point we can find from here, equating as the student has done correctly, equating 0 for y and z, we get 4x plus 4 equals to 0, and that gives us a value of x as minus 1. So minus 1, 0, 0 is a point on pi 2. Now we can find the distance from that point to the plane using the formula. Substitute this with ax plus by plus cx plus d, right? This equation. Substitute the point here and the magnitude. So which is 8 square plus 2 square plus 6 square square root. And when you do that, you get your answer. And then that is how the choice is. So five, uh, the option B is, is the right option, correct? So now let us look in details about solving question number three. Question number three, we have already seen the correct solution and that is probably the best solution. But here is an alternate uh, solution for this particular question. The question here is, determine a value of k for which the following lines intersect at a point. So we are given two sets of lines. Now when we say these lines intersect at a point, we are clearly seeing that these lines are not parallel, so they will always intersect at a point. Now the question could have been, find the value of k so that these are skew lines, right? You get the idea. So, so I could change this to uh, skew lines, right? So I could change the question to skew lines. Find the value of k so that these are skew lines. So that could be another way of doing it anyway. Now anyway, so we'll actually solve the given question, which in this case is not skew lines, but we are trying to find point of intersection. So we are trying to find point of intersection. Well, so what we can use here is uh, we will just rearrange these so that we find a point on each line and then we will see what is the condition that these are not skew lines. So what we are trying to find here is that the lines are not skew, right? So once we say that lines are not skew lines, then it means that they intersect at a point. You get the idea, right? So that is what we are trying to do here. So let us rewrite these equations. We have x equals to 2s. So we can find x equals to 2s. We could write this as x minus 0 over 2 equals to s. You get the idea, right? So we are rearranging y minus 1. We are writing y minus 1 divided by k equals to s. And for z, we have z minus 2 divided by minus 1 equals to s, right? So basically, this particular line, we could also line uh, write down this line as, I'm just changing the order. Uh, we are given the point, which is 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so that becomes the point on this line plus the direction will be 2k minus 1, right? Similarly, we could write for the second line, which is x equals to 4 minus t. So we could write this as x minus 4 over minus 1 equals to t, right? And then for y, we have y minus 5 divided by 2 equals to t. And then we have z plus, we say minus 0, divided by minus 3 equals to t. So that gives us another point, which is uh, uh, 
uh, we could say L2 line is 4 and then we have 5 and 0 plus t minus 1 2 minus 3 right so we have this as our equation of the line now from here we can find whether uh, the lines are skew lines or not right so we'll use this formula which is uh, x2 minus x1 right so we'll do x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 z2 minus i mean z1 right and the directions are uh, as we have written 0 1 2 i mean 2k minus 1 2k minus 1 for the next line it is minus 1 2 minus 3 minus 3 so if they are coplanar right so that means not skew then this should be equal to 0 right to make them coplanar this means they are coplanar they are in the same plane if they are in the same plane they are going to intersect right well x2 minus x1 let me substitute the values we have 0 minus 4 so or I could say 4 minus 0 right so I'll write I'm just saving space 4 minus 0 x2 minus x1 and then we have 5 minus 1 let me write 5 minus 1 here 0 minus 2 there okay 0 minus 2 right so let's calculate this value so that means 4 times minus 3k minus this that becomes plus 2 minus 5 minus 1 is 4 times this is minus 6 minus 1 and then plus minus 2 times 2 times 2 is 4 minus minus k that means plus k that should be equal to 0 so this is what we need to calculate right so let us now calculate minus 12k plus 8 and that is minus 7 that means minus and minus becomes plus 28 7 times 4 minus times plus is minus 8 and that is minus 2k equals to 0 12k 2k both minus gives us minus 14k 8 minus 8 cancels we get plus 28 equals to 0 or we can say k equals to so you could write minus 28 divided by minus 14 that is 2 so we do get k as 2 as our solution and so option a is the correct option so that is alternate way of doing it it's kind of lengthy but it gives you another insight to the same question and it could be helpful in some situation right i hope that helps this is also called scalar triple product right so we did scalar triple product so i hope that helps to understand the concept i'm anil kumar you can subscribe and learn a lot from my videos thank you and all the best